I sometimes get comments or see tweets about how I don't respond well to criticism, but more often than not, I take it very seriously when it's productive. I had a viewer recently email me claiming that I've been spreading misinformation in my videos, telling you all to export in the HEVC video codec for smaller video files and higher quality results for your size on YouTube. They had some rudimentary analysis numbers and some pretty convincing results. This sent me spiraling down a massive rabbit hole and I've uncovered some pretty useful information about YouTube's handling of different video formats and what you actually need to worry about. Time to investigate. But you see, the problem we run into is that YouTube quality is not stagnant. It is always changing. They are always going through and reprocessing videos, especially public ones, especially ones that get a lot of views over time. I've watched, you know, my favorite K-pop music videos go from looking okay, despite all the particle effects and whatever on screen, to getting compressed more and more over the years, to even getting interlacing built in for some TV syndication back in the day, and then recompressed on top of that. There is no singular YouTube quality. There's no, what bitrate does YouTube compress to for any given resolution? It is always changing. They are always transcoding to like six different formats at the same time for one video, for different platforms, for different codecs, all sorts of stuff. There's no singular gauge of YouTube quality at all. This entire exercise is an exercise in kind of madness because I'm never going to land on a consistent answer for you. But also that's kind of part of the point. So I'm going to work with what I got, but this is not a permanent answer by any stretch. Hell, I just had someone in my Discord server a couple days ago referencing a six-year-old video in which I talk about uploading in 1164p to get the original quality option on YouTube. Something that hasn't existed for years because this stuff is always changing and growing and adapting. And even the same video I upload right now may look different from the moment I uploaded and it gets a 4K transcode to two hours from now or the next day or after it gets 100,000 views or something. Like, there, there is no constant here whatsoever. To analyze which video codec is best to encode your videos with for YouTube, I created a few different example lossless files in the appropriate containers that have the most accurate point of comparison. I then encoded that file using a variety of different codecs one might expect to use to export a video from Resolve, as well as a couple from FFmpeg for just testing purposes, uploaded them to YouTube, reacquired them, if you know, you know, and ran them through Netflix's VMAF analysis, as well as comparing visually here. For more granular detail of my methodology, check the blog post linked below. The results are quite surprising, but also not super consistent. Again, YouTube processing is a fickle, ever-changing beast, and you're not going to get identical results twice in a row most of the time. Just looking at the numbers, there's some obvious conclusions. DNX HR HQ and HQX 10-bit, ProRes 422 HQ and FFV1, GoPro Cineform YUV 10-bit, and Grass Valley HQX all tend to provide the absolute best results across the board. These are the least lossy and most bulky codecs here for the most part, so from that angle, it's not surprising that they result in higher quality transcodes on YouTube. But operating from an assumption that YouTube might have, whoa. All right, my camera doesn't want to stay in place, so we're filming the video like this. But operating from an assumption that YouTube might have higher quality transcoding from H.264 due to their hardware processing chain and a million other reasons, it's surprising to see these win. At the same time, other lossless formats with the RGB color space and AVI containers score absolutely horribly. The previous set of bulky files that scored well already took far longer than traditional H.264 and H.265 to process on YouTube, but these, such as Cineform RGB 16-bit, Uncompressed RGB, and Magic YUV, took even longer and then often got gamma shifts in the end on YouTube, which resulted them in scoring worse because they looked a fair bit different than the source. But what about the compressed formats? What should you really be using that you would want to use? Well, with this first sample, H.264 native, that is encoded on CPU rather than encoded on GPUs, scored the best. But HEVC native and H.264 encoded with NVIDIA NVENC were less than one point difference below it. Apple's HEVC hardware encoder is just about one point below all of this, with NVIDIA's HEVC surprisingly two or three points below H.264, with Apple's H.264 being down all the way at the bottom. This was surprising to me. While I didn't ha have much faith in the quality of Apple's compressed codecs on my M2 Ultra Max Studio, I expected NVENC HEVC to perform better here. It's seen major quality improvements over the years, and my overall, in my overall testing outside of this, it's quite a powerful encoder. Something's off. 
While this first sample was a collection of gameplay clips edited together, not really coming from a lossless source, my second sample was a Halo Infinite clip recorded in completely lossless video from the start. We see some similar trends here, with DNX, HR, HQX, and ProRes 422HQ topping the chart, but a different story with the compressed codex. At this time, HEVC and H.264 native are neck and neck, meaning there's no real quality difference on YouTube's end between the two codecs. HEVC will just provide a better, you know, file size, and NVIDIA NVENC H.264 is not far enough behind it to make a difference. This time, Apple H.264... You know what? Hi. <laughs> This time, Apple's H.264 and HEVC are a few points below these codecs, but where is NVIDIA NVENC HEVC? Way below this about nine points lower than everyone else. That is significant. My first angle to figure out what's going on here was to test the encoded samples before uploading to YouTube to compare to see how the actual files themselves are holding up. And sure enough, NVENC HEVC is still a couple points below native H.264 and HEVC, though not quite as drastic as the YouTube transcoded codecs or copies present. To test this further, I encoded my lossless sample to lossless HEVC and H.264 using NVENC and FFmpeg, and these samples shot to the top of the charts. Obviously being a fully lossless encode versus the auto best settings in DaVinci Resolve perhaps provides an unfair advantage here, but it, prov it proves that HEVC, or NVENC HEVC specifically, isn't getting some sort of weird limitation on YouTube's end due to some weird stuff in their black box of processing magic. The problem seems to be a bug or misconfiguration in how DaVinci Resolve handles encoding files with NVENC HEVC. I was able to replicate this over and over with different projects where the same samples Resolve would produce, for example, would be a 4.43 gigabyte file using the native HEVC encoder, but a mere 318 meg file with NVENC HEVC. Native averaged around 478 megabits per second bitrate for this file, with NVENC HEVC averaging just 32 megabits per second. I've reported this to NVIDIA, and they are investigating. This will likely be fixed in a future Resolve update, as I have encountered these kind of weird, you know, encoder bugs with hardware before. Regardless of the bug, we can plainly see that there is no disadvantage to choosing HEVC, but you may want to choose native HEVC over your GPU-encoded HEVC copies, if that's the codec you want to use. I did not get to test Intel Arc or AMD AMF encoders here, but they will fall similarly in line. Finally, I ran this comparison on a bit of camera footage shot in RAW and color graded with my full stack and film grain and all of that. Similar results here, though the NVENC H.264 encoder was on top of these common compressed codecs instead of kind of being towards the middle, which was nice. If we take a look visually, as the numbers only get us so far, especially with one point differences, there's honestly not much to see here. Sometimes GPU encoded HEVC gets a little smoother in areas where H.264 would have more detail at the cost of artifacting, but most surprisingly, the top scoring samples from the like from the lossless side of things like DNX, HR, HQX don't actually look any better than in the final result than H.264 or H.265 did. Yes, you can over overanalyze every frame and find differences, but you'd be hard pressed to make a compelling argument that one was better than the other because typically one codec just has artifacts in different places than the other once it's compressed on YouTube. If you want the best possible quality sent to YouTube, send DNX HRHQX or ProRes 422HQ or perhaps FFV1 so you can have a lossless master to keep. But given the massive file size differences involved here and the longer processing times on YouTube, it's probably not worth the trade-off for most people. Things that surprised me here were how well freaking Photo JPEG of all things performed. I wasn't expecting that. Also, while FFV1 is mathematically lossless on the uh, on the solo Halo sample, it actually scored far worse in the lineup than any of my other samples. I retested this a few times and re-grabbed it after different points in time to see if it processed different. The results are consistent. I can't explain it. Next, I wanted to see if file container mattered. File containers are the different ways video can be stored, usually reflected in the file extension, MP4, MOV, MKV, AVI, and so on. Each container can hold a variety of different codecs with plenty of overlap. Thankfully, I found in all of my samples that MP4, MKV, MOV, whatever, did not really matter for the same source content. Either identical scores were achieved or an insignificant difference just due to the variance of YouTube encoding. A probably unsurprising result was seeing that for the compressed codecs, which most of you would be uploading, utilizing 10-bit or higher chroma subsampling like 422 or 444, generally speaking, did not help scores. 
If anything, they scored worse most of the time, at least with the gameplay samples. This surprised me because it should be a more efficiently encoded file with more data preserved, but YouTube only outputs 8-bit 420 right now, so their whole pipeline would be focused on that anyway. I did notice with my camera footage, however, which was recorded from 12-bit raw 8K video scaled to 4K, had tons of film grain and other little details in it, that the 10-bit copies were actually scoring a little bit better in many cases than the non-10-bit versions of the same codec but it's not consistent enough of a trend to really matter. One of the lessons here would be more tangible evidence of just how high quality your video could be if you upscale to 1440p or 4K instead of uploading native 1080p. But I get asked a lot if upscaling has any impact on the transcoded 1080p version of your video. That is to say, does uploading in 4K net you better 1080p or 1440p quality than uploading directly in 1080p or 1440p? Honestly, the answer is inconclusive. Scores go back and forth, where some samples are better in the 4K transcoded copy at 1080p, and some are better in the native copy at 1080p or 1440p. Ultimately, this means you aren't losing any quality by upscaling to 4K or 1440p, so that's a win. This was a fun investigation, but ultimately the conclusion is pretty simple. Upload in the highest quality you can. If you have the internet speed and patience to upload a DNX HR, ProRes, or FFV1 master file, go for it. You'll have a wonderful copy preserved for years to come, and YouTube will have the best quality it can to work with and probably continue to iterate upon during future transcodes. If you prefer the expedient workflow of H.264 and HEVC, go for it. I still see nothing wrong with recommending HEVC and the quality difference of NVENC HEVC versus native or H.264, even with the reduced bitrate bug, is honestly not noticeable at all. So I stand by my recommendations in my Resolve export settings video, but perhaps you've learned a thing or two about how YouTube processing works. Check this video to see the effort mentioned, you know, Resolve export setting recommendations, or this one to learn how to produce the best sounding audio in OBS. And remember to be kind, rewind.